From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Drake Dunaway. Cronkite News is dedicated to covering education in Arizona. Tonight, a look at some of the success stories from our schools and the challenges facing teachers and students statewide. High school students who take advanced placement tests have the opportunity to earn college credit, but now teachers and schools are benefiting from their students passing the AP tests. John Cardinelli is live in the broadcast center to explain. John? In 2016, Governor Doug Ducey signed into law the College Credit by Examination Incentive Program. The program allows teachers to earn a bonus for each one of their students that passes the test. Money was distributed to teachers and schools for the first time this year. Jim Clark is an AP physics teacher that has been teaching at Hamilton High School in Chandler since it opened in 1998. The AP courses are designed as advanced placements, so it's for kids that are advanced in whatever area to kind of keep moving forward and do college level work while they're still in high school. Every advanced placement class is associated with an exam taken at the end of the school year. Clark has had a great pass rate among his students. For mechanics, I believe the average was, it was over 90% with an average score of 4.2 something out of five. AP students that passed the exam received college credit, but now teachers are also getting an incentive. I had 102 students pass at the appropriate level and I think it worked out to 15,000 and change. Gross. This 15,000 earned was a bonus due to the college credit by examination incentive program. The program paid out teachers for the first time this year. On average, a teacher can earn $300 for every one of their students that passes. Half of that $300 goes back to the school district. The other part of the money that, that does come to the district um, is, is going to be directed towards the sites um, as far as for supporting training, curriculum, and needs of, of those classes. One AP student who just learned about the program thinks it is well deserved. The fact that they're getting this uh, recognition right now and they're getting some extra incentive is great and awesome. And Clark says, while the new bonus is nice, at the end of the day, it is students passing the AP test that matters to him. Education gets a bad rap here in Arizona, and my students can then see, hey, you know what, I'm doing just as good as all those states that supposedly have awesome education. Well, we have an awesome education here as well. According to analysis by AZ Central, $3.8 million was awarded this year to teachers and schools across the state. Hamilton High School received the most out of any school in Arizona with $213,000. In the Broadcast Center, John Cardinelli, Cronkite News. Valley Metro is expanding their efforts from the streets to the classroom. I went to South Phoenix to discover how a new program is set to inspire the next generation of engineers. South Phoenix is an underpoverished neighborhood that has not had the opportunities of other neighborhoods. The reality is, is that this is a community that doesn't have that natural path. They don't have natural mentors in place like other communities do. That's why they're taking it upon themselves to mentor these students. Valley Metro and PGH Wong Engineering are launching a STEM-based program called Engineers of and students, they're excited. Yes, I really do love this. We get to build stuff and have fun and learn new, learn lots of things about it and meet new kids. Not only meet new kids, but also meet new engineers. We are a minority engineering company. And so we, we strongly promote minorities in the engineering field. According to the National Science Foundation's most recent report, minorities continue to be underrepresented in the science and engineering field, with over 66% of employment for whites and around 33% for other races and ethnicities. This program aims to improve these numbers by mentoring young students. If you start early, you can get people thinking that they, they have a future that it maybe isn't one that they naturally have thought of maybe isn't one that they're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. An impact can be made early on in students' lives in the seventh and eighth grade so they can imagine what it's like to be an engineer and follow that through high school and college. But the ultimate goal of the program is much simpler. To give people a, a, a chance, to give uh, bright, 
bright kids a, a chance to, to thrive, uh, to give back to the community that's giving so much for this. This is not our project, it's, it's their project. And at the end of the day, students don't just leave with a cupcake, but with something a little extra, the opportunity to develop a career. And that's icing on the cake. The program will focus on seven schools in South Phoenix and will mentor students through support and design projects throughout the school year. Peoria High School is also home to the Met Professional Academy, an academy where high school students work in areas of medical, engineering, and technology. Reporter Tanaya Williamson met up with a group of students who are working on a project geared toward helping children with disabilities. The opportunity is immense. Holden Gardner is a senior at Ironwood High School, but he meets up with his STEM team at Met Professional Academy a few times a week to work on projects. The team was given a mock situation that requires them to improve the life of a person facing a disability. Their mock person is named Penny. And so we are looking at this model, this, like, this model, this mock situation, and trying to find a way where we can strengthen her neck muscles specifically where she can look up, look around, and just function. The students at the academy receive help from teachers who provide guidance, but allow the students to call the shots. When our students get involved in their projects, we try to be as hands-off as we can. We want, them to we want them to fail so that they can learn from the failure and end up ultimately being successful and know that they did it, not that it was handed to them. The students participated in the Makers of Change presentation of solutions hosted by Southwest Human Development. The Makers Challenge uh, brings together students from high schools across the valley uh, to support uh, some of the things that we're trying to solve at our ADAPT shop where we work with young kids that have severe physical disabilities. Several high school teams received prototype chairs from Southwest Human Development and met to present their solutions to a panel for a chance to win $500. And although the Met Academy team did not win, there was still something to take away from the opportunity. It's not only presenting, but also working with engineering students a little bit out of my comfort zone. I learned that it's very important for to communicate. In Phoenix, Tanaya Williamson, Cronkite News. Met Professional Academy is part of the Peoria Unified School District, which allows students from different schools to come together and work outside of the traditional school setting. Recent data shows that women are underrepresented in STEM fields, even more so when it comes to women of color. Cronkite News reporter Edgardo Lasoya spoke with an ASU undergraduate student who understands the importance of her role in the sciences. ASU senior Phoebe Newell grew up in Arizona and is pursuing an undergraduate degree in molecular biosciences and biotechnology. Why STEM? Like women in STEM is, that means that we want to do something to be role models. As a child, Newell's love for STEM grew as she visited the Science Museum with her family and through science projects involving baking soda and vinegar volcanoes. I knew I wanted to do something related to science and biology-ish when I entered college, um, and I'm now pre-med. But Newell is not the norm. The world of STEM is still struggling to bring in more women, especially women of color. Women are less likely to enter and more likely to leave careers in STEM because of male-dominated work environments and lack of support from their sponsors. One ASU department tells us a reason this could be happening. We did a yearly outreach that was to middle school girls. Um, but you can say the words of, oh yes, you're welcome here as much as you like. Uh, it only matters if when they come, they actually feel welcome. In a 2014-2015 study by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, women of color earned a smaller percentage of bachelor degrees across all STEM fields, with Asian women holding 4.8% and Latinas holding just 3.6%. As the daughter of an immigrant who became a doctor, Newell says she's continuously inspired by her mother's journey, and she won't be deterred from achieving her goals. There's always going to be someone who doesn't like whatever you're doing, no matter what you do. So you just have to say, I know what I like to do, I know what I want to do, and I'm going to do it. Um, and that's something that definitely is important. In Tempe, Edgardo Lozoya, Cronkite News. The Center for Gender Equality in Science and Technology at ASU is one place that's focusing on creating more opportunities for women of all races in STEM field. In this competition, first isn't just a place, it's the name of the game. 
First stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Reporter Tanaya Williamson was at the first LEGO League Qualifier Tournament this weekend and met with a group of kids who are using STEM to make robots and have a good time. I'm at the first LEGO League Qualifier Tournament and I'm with... Area 52 was one of 15 teams who met up over the weekend for a chance to compete in the first LEGO League competition hosted by Intel. And basically, we all have to do three categories, robot, core values, and project. This team has worked together for about three years as a result of a nonprofit called Education Empowers. I'm really passionate about technology. I'm also passionate about volunteering and giving back to the community. So I find this two uh, go hand in hand. Anna Prakash co founded Education Empowers a few years ago with her daughter because they wanted to reach more kids and introduce them to STEM. Now we work with a number of nonprofits in the Valley, all the boys and girls clubs, YMCAs. Today they reach children all across the state, making it possible for them to participate in competitions. The teams develop models using Legos. They use coding to make the models move across the boards to complete different challenges, which earns them points. There's stuff in there like sensors and just regular bricks and like stuff that you have to connect together. At the end of the day, like most kids, Area 52 just wants to have fun. Here it's fun. It's fun like doing a competition with your friends. Area 52 had a good time at the competition and qualified for the state tournament coming up in January. In Chandler, Tanaya Williamson, Cronkite News. Each team is paired with a mentor from Intel and work over the course of three months to prepare for the big competition. Join us each week on Catalyst, the show that explores new advancements, technologies, and innovations at Arizona State University that are shaping the future for tomorrow and beyond. Catalyst, Wednesdays at 9, right here on Arizona PBS. October is National Bullying Awareness Month, and One Valley School has a spooky twist on it. Cronkite News reporter John Cardinelli has the details in Glendale. Students at Barcelona Elementary School in Glendale cheered and clapped when a monster walked into their auditorium. You know, Don't Be a Monster is a, is a charitable program that was founded by haunters. So where we were working with other charities, we found that those charities didn't always understand where we were coming from as a haunted house organization and maybe weren't exactly what we were looking to impact. So what did the haunters want to impact? No Bullying and they wanted to do it using a scary character. This is Frank Shelley. He appears to be a monster, but in fact, he's not a monster at all. It is through his story that Don't Be a Monster is able to teach children about bullying. I saw the video for the first time, and it sent me back like, wow, we're showing this in a school environment. The video depicts Frank as a school student who constantly gets bullied because of his monstrous looks. It covers a wide range of topics, including cyberbullying and how to stand up for others and yourself. Students say the video makes an impact. Be yourself and don't let others judge you. Like if someone bullies you, maybe just try to ignore it or ask an adult to help you. And while many lessons on bullying can be taken away from Frank's video, Frank is what resonates with most. It really becomes this character that goes beyond just the screen in the video. I have people asking for him at the show, hey, is Frank out here tonight? Is he going to be in the show? And it's, you want to keep the magic alive like Frank's real. But, you know, I, I, I turn to things like, no, he's not one of the monsters scary. And Frank doesn't like to scare people. Frank doesn't scare people because he comforts those who can relate with him instead. In Glendale, John Cardinelli, Cronkite News. Don't Be a Monster has been serving in Phoenix for roughly six years, and they plan on bringing informative presentations on bullying to schools for years to come. Teaching in Arizona is not just what people do for a living. It is also the name of a new documentary. Reporter Tania Williamson has the full story. Arizona teachers received the attention of millions this year as they marched during the Red for Ed movement. The documentary Teaching in Arizona covered that, plus a little more about the profession and what it means in our state. We chose to create this documentary um, in order to really show people uh, what it's like to be a teacher today and to dispel the myths that teaching is a part-time job and that it in fact is a profession that requires a lot of preparation, professional development, mentoring and training to be highly effective. Those of us who are not teachers, hopefully what this documentary will share is uh, to, to kind of be a wake-up call 
to help each and every one of us to say, you know what, we need to do more to help our teachers. So that is 24 seven. I'm just a teacher all the time. There are times that I just have nothing left in me. I just kind of just, pff, I can't, I can't give anymore. There's no more I can give. I've been teaching for 12 years, so it's been amazing. I love teaching. It is really, really hard, but it's been amazing. Teachers like Nathaniel Rios were featured in the film and opened up about the financial difficulties that he and his wife face. I have a second job. I teach during the day, and then uh, this Saturday I'll work um, to 9, 10 o'clock in an ice cream shop, and next Friday I'll work to 11.30, probably 12, and close the ice cream shop down. Rio says that although salary is a factor, that there is much more to be addressed. There's, there's more conversation to be had that is complex, uh, and teachers would like to have a seat at the table because we feel like we, being on the front lines, know what that looks like. And Tempe, Tanaya Williamson, Cronkite News. Teaching in Arizona is being screened across the valley. The next screening will take place on November 29th. Students with autism are getting the extra support they need with a first-of-its-kind school right here in Arizona. Cronkite News reporter Jennifer Alvarez takes us there. He says, give me some love, Johnny. <laughs> give me some love. That's Apollo, the therapy dog. His job, to make these students feel at home. They're the nicest, kindest, sweetest kids on the face of this earth. They're also twice exceptional, and that means... Our students are academically bright, and they've all been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, uh, which is a form of high-functioning autism. Gateway Academy is the only school in Arizona that focuses on a pure population of students that are on the autism spectrum. Does somebody want to share what it was that they picked? Here, students receive hands-on academics, speech and language therapy, and occupational therapy as part of their education. Working here for me has been kind of a savior. Working with the kids is always fun because you get to know all of them. They have that extra drive there that I don't see in a lot of other students. Chris Kinder, a senior, says other schools just weren't right for him. So why is this one fit for you? This one fits much better because the staff here is used to, used to kids with special needs and you can make friends very easily here. You don't have to worry about, very, about differences as everyone here is pretty much the same. The school CEO Robin Sweet says special needs can't stop them from learning, achieving, and succeeding. The diagnosis is an explanation. It does not define who you are. You ultimately, by your actions and how you walk through life, define who you are. And she says this school and the students never fail to fill her heart. Oh my gosh. I love what I do. Like the teachers, this is a, mich a mission and a passion. Uh, I love coming here in the morning. I love staying late. Uh, it's the reward is unexplainable. Gateway Academy was founded in 2005, and they say 100% of its graduates have gone on to college. Arizona first responders and medical professionals came together to learn about burns, everything from how fire spreads to mass casualties. As Sammy Gebers reports, they're getting a chance to prepare for disasters. More for like the burn also. It has been 14 years. Absorbs any, any wound fluid. Of spreading awareness on burns. The annual symposium is educating professionals on treatment and more. Now this event isn't just about burns. Medical professionals and first responders are telling me they're here downstairs gathering to make a better team. Collaboration is very important, and especially when you're dealing with mass, mass casualty events or disasters. That's part of the reason why Ronnie Ramat is here. You no, know, I'm a trauma nurse, so in ICU. He knows the importance of working as a team. Especially like a nurses, technician, provider. Oh, in a crisis moment, is a hospital prepared for what's going on at the Forest Service office? Can they communicate? This, this is the kind of place where those little walls get broken down so well. And Dr. Diane Heinemann tells me this is especially important 
today. Certainly in this country, there have been lots of mass casualties, and even in the last 10, 10 years, it seems that those sorts of things are growing. So whether it's military, doctors, or firefighters, they'll learn about burns, treatments, and disasters. Thank you, sir. But they are also learning to be a team as well. In Mesa, Sam McGeebers, Cronkite News. The symposium is put on by Maricopa Integrated Health System and the Arizona Burn Center, the only verified burn center in the state. One city is finding a creative way to educate the community on sustainability. Reporter Jennifer Alvarez went to Glendale to check out their desert food forest. It's peaceful, it's innovative. It's the desert food garden. The Desert Food Forest is a unique and special little garden where it's like the desert reveals its secrets. The secret that the Sonoran Desert is able to produce food year round. And as Joanne Toms, the environmental program manager for the city, explains, the plants themselves, their seeds, or their fruit can all be made into other foods. The mesquite pods can be ground into a flour and that can be used to make cookies or mesquite pancakes. The city holds walking tours of the garden as well as family-friendly workshops to teach about edible plants and sustainable landscaping. The goal is to bring adults and children out here to teach them about how to embrace the desert that we live in in Arizona as a whole. The garden is located alongside Glendale's main library, which has many books on desert gardening. This one is a really good one. It's Sonoran Desert Food Plants. And this just really goes through a lot of the different types of, of cacti. You've got ground cover, you have trees, weeds. And at the end of the day, Tom says this program is all about learning to love our home. People come from all over the world to visit the Sonoran Desert. And for us that live here, uh, it just gives us a greater appreciation of where we live. In Glendale, Jennifer Alvarez, Cronkite News. The city was honored with a 2018 Crescordia Award for Environmental Education and Communication for their Desert Food Forest earlier this month. According to the CDC, 1 in 59 children in the U.S. are diagnosed with autism, making it the most prevalent developmental disorder in the nation. Reporter Ashley Mackey takes a look at how an organization in the Valley is using tennis as a learning tool for children on the spectrum. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability that can cause social, communication, and behavioral challenges. People with ASD may communicate, behave, and learn in ways that are different from most other people. A nonprofit organization called Acing Autism uses tennis to positively impact children with autism in the Valley. We met Richard Sperling, who is the CEO and founder of Acing Autism back in 2016. I love the program and told him as soon as he's ready to implement the program in Phoenix, just to give us a call. Chad and Elena Campbell's son, Ewan, was diagnosed with autism in 2015. Elena says finding activities for their son to participate in was difficult, but acing autism provided that opportunity. We have two older children and we have a tennis company of our own, so we wanted to find a place that our son with autism could also enjoy the sport and it could be a fully inclusive game for our family. Acing Autism in Phoenix is also partnered with the Southwest Autism Research and Resource Center, or SARC, a nonprofit organization dedicated to autism research and education. SARC has sent out certified therapists to come and teach the coaches and volunteers best practices, strategies, and techniques when working with kids with autism. Well, Acing Autism's curriculum was built for children on the autism spectrum. The whole idea is to create language and communication opportunities for the children. Tennis is really just the excuse or the vehicle for delivering these opportunities. And it's just great to see a, a grassroots program bringing kids that would not normally have the opportunity to play tennis. Chad says when they started Acing Autism in Phoenix, they had about six kids and six volunteers. A year and a half later, and they had 13 children and 15 volunteers, and they only hoped to see it continue to grow. In Phoenix, Ashley Mackey, Cronkite News. The program holds their tennis practices at Arcadia High School. Teachers at One Valley High School are preparing students for tests in a different and more interactive way inside the classroom. Reporter Micah Bledsoe went to Queen Creek to see what it means to escape the room. Here at Queen Creek High School, students are retiring their typical study sessions in the 
in the library with books for timed test preps that you've probably never seen before. Begin. Sorry. I have a time limit and for each level there's a different puzzle or um, riddle or something like that that has something to do with the subject that we're learning that we're about to test on and so we just keep unlocking the puzzles until we can unlock the box and get our prize. Groff is an 11th grader at Queen Creek High and says this kind of escape the room is a great way to keep lessons fresh in their memory. Kylie Bean, a teacher at Queen Creek High, says she got the idea for classroom escape the room online watching a science webinar. All the puzzles require them to use logic and reasoning skills, which are all higher level uh, depths of knowledge for, for kids to have to use. Students have to work together to escape, hoping to be first in claiming their prize. So you get candy and that's always a great motivator, but then also we get um, tickets, which um, this one I have right now, it says that I get a free A plus on any as assessment worth 10 points or less. For one unit, Bean says it takes 10 to 20 hours to put one set of puzzles together, but it's worth every penny and minute spent. You know, you always have one or two or three students that sit in the back and they kind of want to sleep or they put their head down or they're shy or they're quiet. That's not the case with the escape the rooms. It's 100% engagement. Every student is involved in the process, and that's hard to do. In Queen Creek, Micah Bledsoe, Cronkite News. Queen Creek High will have workshops to show other teachers in different subjects how to participate in this kind of educational escape the room. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.